Hi everyone. I am Ava, short for another virtual assistant thanks to Mr. Yin. In this video, let us talk about Mr. Yin's recent paper. Lowering the number of young children dying is an ongoing challenge, and it's often used to measure progress in medicine. Around the world, about 5 million kids under the age of 5 die, and many of these deaths could be stopped. To help with this problem, a tool called cardiotocograms CTGs, has become popular for checking a baby's health before it's born. CTGs use sound waves to check the baby's overall health and see if the child might die. But understanding CTG results can take a lot of time and is hard to do, especially in places where there aren't many expert doctors for pregnant women. This study talks about a new way to figure out a baby's health using CTGs, and it works 99.59% of the time. To further explain the CTG measurements, an algorithm based off of RISE, Randomized Input Sampling for Explanation of Black Box Models, was created, called Feature Alteration for Explanation of Black Box Models, FAB. The findings of this novel algorithm were compared to Shapley Additive Explanations, SHAP, and Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations, LIME. Overall, this technology allows doctors and medical professionals to classify fetal health with high accuracy and determine which features were most influential in the process. Infant mortality has been a continuing issue for many decades in healthcare systems around the world. Although we have developed instruments that can assess many aspects of fetal health, reading and interpreting CTG data is not always possible in regions that lack an expert obstetrician. The most efficient way to solve these problems is to implement an explainable model, which is a model that can not only predict results with high accuracy, but can also explain how it arrived at the decision to scientists implementing the model. With this knowledge, obstetricians can inform their patients what the exact metric is that is abnormal, and also be able to better treat their patient based on the abnormality. For example, if the model was to predict a pathological case for a fetus, it would also be able to show that the reason behind the prediction was a low number of uterine contractions per second. Using this knowledge, a doctor can relay this to their patient, advising rest and hydration, while in more severe cases, administer drugs such as oxytocin to help bring levels back to normal. In order to achieve this type of high-performing yet explainable model, three different models were implemented, an extreme gradient boost classifier, a light gradient boost classifier, and a support vector classifier. A high accuracy was obtained with all three, meaning that the explainable portion was ready to be added. Building on previous success with high accuracy models, the models used previously tested SHAP and Lyme values to rank feature importance. Both sets of metrics were then compared, with a considerable overlap in important features. With these two new metrics, the novel algorithms were able to accurately predict which measurements from the cardiotocogram were the most influential in the prediction. In order to more accurately explain the model and have more methods to rely on, feature altering for explanations of black box models, FAB, was created. This algorithm was inspired by RISE, a metric that was previously used in image classification problems. This is a visual designed to briefly go over the research steps taken and show how the data was used to eventually come up with an effective model. The first step to creating the machine learning model was understanding and manipulating the data so that it could be used. The data was obtained from a paper that collected CTG measurements, reported the data, and created a machine learning model called CISPORTO to classify the data. Then the measurements were collected by the authors of the paper from all around the world making it ideal for training the model. The data set contained 2,126 records of measurements extracted from cardiotocogram exams, which were then annotated by three expert obstetricians into three classes. Class 1 refers to normal health, class 2 indicates a possible risk to the fetus, and class 3 is pathological. For each instance, the obstetricians agreed on one classification. For each examination by the CTG, 21 features were recorded. These features measured many trends in fetal heart rate such as variations, accelerations and decelerations, and histogram values of the heart rates. Along with that, 
uterine contractions in the mother and movements by the fetus were also measured and recorded. This table shows the name of these features. For more details, please read our paper. When the LGBM classifier model was first fit to the fetal health data, a 95% accuracy was achieved using the default parameters. The XGB classifier was able to classify the data with a 96% accuracy using default parameters. We also fine-tuned the support vector machine and achieved 99%. What are gradient boosting machines? Imagine you're playing a game where you guess how many candies are in a jar. You make a guess, but it's not perfect. Then, a friend tries to guess based on your guess, but they also try to fix the mistakes you made. Another friend comes along and tries to guess, fixing the mistakes of both you and the first friend. This keeps happening, with each friend trying to correct the mistakes of the guesses before them. In the end, all the guesses combined make a really good guess. Gradient boosting machine is like that game. It's a way for computers to learn from data by making lots of guesses, one after the other, and fixing the mistakes of the previous guesses. By doing this, the computer gets really good at making predictions. What are support vector machines? Imagine you have a big box of toy cars and toy airplanes, and you want to separate them into two different piles. You could draw a line on the floor between the two piles to show which side the cars are on and which side the airplanes are on. A support vector machine is like an imaginary friend who helps you draw that line, but they're really good at it. They find the best possible line that separates the cars and airplanes while keeping the biggest space between them. This way, it's easier to tell which toy belongs to which pile. So, when you get a new toy, you can quickly figure out if it's a car or an airplane by looking at which side of the line it's on. There you go. I hope this video could help you better understand our work. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.